Hey everybody, welcome back to Actual Investing. Intel stock over the past five years is actually down 32%. And I think that may be leaving some investors wondering whether Intel is a deep value stock or whether they're beyond hope and can't really be saved at this point. So today I'm going to look into the semiconductor giant known as Intel Corp, find out what's going on with the business and see if I think Intel makes a compelling buy today or not. So before we start analyzing Intel, I think it's important to know what Intel does because they are quite a complex company. Google's AI, which maybe doesn't have the best track record, tells us that Intel is a leading American company that manufactures semiconductors and other electronic components. Intel's processors are used in laptops, desktops, workstations, servers, and other devices for personal and business use. Thanks, Google. So when we look at Intel's investor relations, they do have quarterly investor presentations, which I like to see. And on their most recent presentation, they talk about the different segments that they operate in. These would be Intel products, which are things like network and edge, as well as data center and AI. That's probably the most exciting segment. Then we have things like Intel Foundry, which is foundry services and manufacturing. And finally, we have all other, which are businesses like Altera and Mobileye. So let's talk about each of these. Intel products is probably where Intel competes most with companies like AMD and Nvidia. Intel happens to be the leader in CPU chips. According to Amazon Web Services, a CPU is the primary component that processes signals and makes computing possible and is essentially the brains of any computing device, just like a human needs a brain to send signals throughout the body to tell it what to do. A CPU is quite similar, except instead of a body, it's a computer. Now, Intel's CPUs are not exactly where they compete with companies like AMD and Nvidia. Where they compete with those other semiconductor companies are through their AI accelerators. So AMD and NVIDIA, according to Computer World, don't typically discuss pricing of their chips, but apparently where an AMD or NVIDIA system might cost around $300,000, Intel believes they can deliver a similar system for $100,000. So while Intel is certainly not the leader in AI chips, they may be the low-cost alternative to giants such as NVIDIA. Intel claims its Gaudi AI accelerators are a third less expensive compared to competitive platforms, namely NVIDIA's GPUs. Intel is certainly a direct competitor against NVIDIA in the AI market with products across data center, cloud, edge, and devices. However, NVIDIA is hyper-focused on data center accelerators. They dominate this market with a very high market share. Increasingly, as this market grows, Intel will grow its overall share, but NVIDIA is still likely to dominate. This is taken from an article from Computer World, which I feel like really demonstrates how Intel and NVIDIA compete. Where they differ is in this next segment, Intel Foundry. So Intel is one of the only large semiconductor companies that actually manufactures their semiconductors in-house. Most others, like NVIDIA and AMD, actually outsource this to a company called TSMC, or Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. So when we look into Intel's wafer foundry, we can see that they are actually manufacturing their own chips all around the world in places like Ohio, Arizona, Ireland, and Germany. They claim that they have world-class foundry offerings enabled by advanced process technologies and complemented by a robust partner ecosystem with alliances for intellectual property, electronic design automation, and design services. So essentially, rather than relying on TSMC and other smaller companies like Global Foundries, Intel has just decided that they're gonna do it all themselves and become vertically integrated. So this might be a good idea, but it also might not. When we look at Intel's investor relations, we can see that their foundry segment actually operates at a loss. We can see that it historically brings in anywhere from four to $5 billion in revenue per quarter, but it generates losses of one to $3 billion per quarter. We're seeing a negative operating margin of anywhere from 25 to almost 60% per quarter. So that's not great. It makes me wonder why Intel continues to do this instead of becoming a fabulous chip maker like Nvidia or AMD, especially since this segment is losing them so much money. But regardless, let's look at this all other segment, which is Altera and Mobileye. I've talked a bit about Mobileye on my channel. Essentially, they make chips for autonomous driving solutions. Uh, Intel actually spun off Mobileye very recently, and now Mobileye is its own standalone company, but Intel still owns a good chunk of the company. Altera is their Intel Programmable Solutions Group, which develops chips like FPGAs. An FPGA is a field programmable gate array, and it's a type of IC, which is just a semiconductor chip, integrated circuit, that can be repeatedly programmed after manufacturing. So that's a bit about what Intel does. They have three segments. They're chips which are used for computers, gaming systems, data center servers, and more. 
their foundry where they actually manufacture these chips, and their other segment, which doesn't really fall into either of these two buckets. When we look at their financials, we can kind of get a breakdown of how each of these segments are doing. We can see that their Intel products is doing quite well overall. Their client computing group is actually up 31% year over year with total products revenue up 17% year over year. So that's nice to see some double digit revenue growth. But when we keep going, we can see that their foundry revenues are down 10%. And like we said, that's uh, you know currently operating at a loss anyway. And their other is also down 46%, led mostly by that Altera down 58% and Mobileye down 48%. So we can see that those second two segments the Foundry and all other are really dragging down the star of the show, which is their Intel products division, leading to total net revenue being only up 9% year over year. When we look at Intel's financials on their income statement, we can see that their profitability is a little bit all over the place, uh, with some quarters showing very positive net income, but other quarters showing very minimal to even negative net income. It looks like the first quarter is traditionally weak for Intel. But when we zoom out a bit, we can see that overall for the past five years, both revenue and net income are down significantly. Back in 2019, Intel had revenue of about 72 billion and net income of 21 billion. So those are actually some really nice profit margins. But just last year, they had lower revenue and significantly lower net income of just 1.7 billion. So you can blame anything, you can blame their lack of innovation, you can blame the rise of competition, but really Intel just has not been executing lately. So can they turn things around? Well, according to Morningstar, Intel is making proper strategic moves, but faces core business risks. Morningstar expects that Intel will remain the leader in central processing units, those are the CPUs we talked about, in PCs and servers for years to come. However, Intel's best days are likely behind it, as it currently has a chip manufacturing disadvantage against Taiwan Semiconductor or TSMC and its processor partners such as AMD, Nvidia, and Apple. So apparently, Intel is actually looking to regain parity with TSMC, but faces some execution risk. As we saw, it's still operating at a loss. Morningstar also says even if Intel achieves its aspirations of reaching five manufacturing node improvements in four years, there's no guarantee of a booming market for PC or server CPUs. Meanwhile, the market for artificial intelligence accelerators, such as Intel's Gaudi products, should skyrocket, but NVIDIA and even AMD may be better positioned in the AI market, and I tend to agree with that. NVIDIA and AMD have been seeing massive growth in their data center segment, whereas Intel hasn't quite seen that in their division. And sure, they could play catch up, but I, I would have liked to see them capitalize on this AI demand already, so they shouldn't even need to play catch up. Taking a look at my high quality company sheet on my spreadsheet, I can analyze Intel on 11 different factors. So taking a look, I honestly like what I see for the most part financially. Intel has a decent dividend yield of about 1.5%. Their PE ratio isn't significantly high at just 36. Their price to annualized sales is on the lower end at 2.6. Uh, they do have a geographically diversified revenues with 74% of their sales coming internationally. Their debt to equity ratio is on the lower end at 47%. Their gross margins are decent at 41. They're not spending too much on SG&A. One thing I do have to give Intel a ding is their research and development to gross profit, which currently sits at 71%. I typically don't like to invest in anything with research and development being higher than 50% of a company's gross profit. But I don't know if this is totally a bad thing or not. When we look at research and development spending for the semiconductor market as a whole, we can see that it's really just taken off lately because with the advances in computing, you really need it to research in order to stay competitive. And I think Intel has done a pretty poor job of that in the past. So maybe the fact that they're spending more on research and development now is a good thing. Maybe they can put those R&D dollars to good work and catch up with competitors like AMD and Nvidia. I think this chart does a really good job of showing exactly what's going on with R&D in the semiconductor industry. Over the past two decades, we can see that it's just been on a straight upward trajectory, and I don't expect this to stop anytime soon. So when you're investing in a semiconductor stock, expect that you're going to have to see a bit higher research and development than peers in other industries. So maybe we can look past that for Intel. So having looked at everything, it's time to ask the question, is Intel a buy today? Well, like we said, the company is at a five-year low in terms of stock price, or at least near a five-year low, but that doesn't necessarily make it cheap. Intel's growing their revenues slowly, and their valuation looks a bit pessimistic, with a PE of 36 and price to annualized sales of 2.6. For reference, AMD has a PE of 256, and NVIDIA has a PE of 77, both of which are significantly higher than Intel's PE of 36. 
So that doesn't automatically make them cheap. However, if you have an optimistic view of Intel's turnaround plan and you do think that they can make some investments that will help them to regain parity with TSMC and their fabless competitors like AMD and Nvidia, perhaps this low valuation makes a good entry point for an Intel investor. I personally will not be buying Intel shares only because I don't really love investing in turnaround stories. I try to limit that as much as possible in my portfolio. Uh, I've seen it so many times where a company tries to turn things around and just falls flat on their face. Um, however, I don't think it would be the worst investment today. I think what you're getting is a high risk, potentially high reward option. So if Intel does continue to grow their revenues and does turn things around, they're starting off with a very low valuation. So this could compound and we could see some multiple expansion happening very, very quickly. So Intel, to conclude, I do like the stock. However, I don't like it enough to make an investment. But if you do have a high risk tolerance and you believe that they can turn things around, I think it makes sense to perhaps do a dollar cost average into Intel. Maybe don't buy everything right away, but buy a little bit over time for the next few months and see where things go. As always, this is not investment advice, just my thoughts on the matter. I hope that this helps you when analyzing Intel stock. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. I post stock deep dives and please like the video if you liked it. Thanks again for sticking around and I hope you all have an awesome day.